Hey boys and girls. Today we're going to continue working with the commutative property of multiplication and we're also going to do some skip counting um, the objects in arrays to help us be able to find the product of something. Okay, so let's take a look at our learning goals for today. Um, the first one is I can demonstrate the commutative property of multiplication. So that just means I can use it. I can explain how I use it. The second one says I can practice related facts by skip counting arrays in or objects in an array model. Okay, so all that means is related facts are part of the commutative property. So if I know that two times four equals eight, I know that the related fact is four times two equals eight. Okay, so it's just flipping those factors. All right, let's jump in and get started with our first problem. So for this one, we're going to talk again about rotating arrays. We're going to talk about how they are vertical when they're up and down and how they're horizontal when they are side to side. So what I'd like for you to do is I would like for you to turn your whiteboard so that it's long, so it's vertical. Okay. And then I would like for you to skip count by threes four times. And I want you to write down the numbers as you say them. Let's go. So let me say that again. Skip count by threes four times. So you could do that by saying three, six, nine, twelve. That's four times that I skip counted by threes. Okay. So go ahead and try that again and write that on your board. Skip count by threes four times. And you should get something that looks like this guy right here. Remember? Three, six, nine, twelve. Okay. Now I want you to draw an array that matches that skip counting. Okay, so the array should count, um, should match how you count your number of rows to represent the number of groups. So you counted that four times and there was three in each skip count that you did. So go ahead and draw your array and we'll see if ours match. All right, so I'm going to share mine with you. So if you haven't finished, click pause and then finish and then, then resume when you're ready. Okay. So here is mine that I came up with, okay? So I have my vertical arrays going up and down. When I look at this, I see that there are four rows, right? Remember, rows go side to side. One, two, three, four, okay? And then there are three in each row. One, two, three, okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to take that board that you have in your array and I want you to take it and remember instead of going like this, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and you're going to turn it sideways. Remember, I can't do that so I need a little bit of help with mine. And I'm going to just, whoops, I'm going to rotate mine side to side. Okay, so as I do that, now I need to kind of look at this array again. Now how many rows in my horizontal array are there. Yeah, there's three rows that go side to side and there's four columns that go up and down. Okay, so for this one, now what I want to do is I want to skip count that represents this array. So remember how we just did this one last time. Let me go over this one. We did three, six, nine, twelve. So for this next one, because they're in groups of four, we're going to skip count by fours. So ready? Four, eight, twelve. Okay. So if we talk about this, what's the difference between these two arrays? So I have my vertical array on the left and my horizontal array on the right. What's the difference between those? Yeah, they have the same factors, right? Right. If we were to write those as a multiplication sentence, that's one way. Okay. The vertical way shows three rows, or sorry, four threes were in a row. And the horizontal array, um, array flips that and shows that there are four rows of three. Okay, so did the total number of stars in each array change? No, yeah, they stayed exactly the same. Okay, so the total and the factors stayed the same, but the factors switched places. So let's say if I wanted to describe this one, remember we could do four times three. And then this one would be three times four, okay? So the factors just flip-flopped their places, okay? We learned about in that in the previous lesson. Do you guys remember what that property is called? 
the commutative property. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So and just notice how these are the same factors. They will give you the same total. Okay. To be able to solve that problem. Remember, that's one thing that's helpful for you friends. That's an awesome strategy. Okay. Let's take a look at another example. All right, so for this problem, I would like for you to draw on your board an array that shows five rows and three columns. So I put this up here for you, and I even did these fun little arrows. Remember rows? Side to side. Columns up and down. Okay, so see if you can draw that array. And if you're not finished, click pause, pause, because I'm going to share mine with you now. Okay. Ta-da! There's my array. Okay, so I have five rows. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's three columns. One, two, three. Think about, sometimes it's hard for me to remember rows and columns, but I remember like when you row a boat, okay, you kind of keep your arms going like from side to side. They're not going up and down like as you're rowing, okay? And then columns, think about how you see maybe on like houses, they have those pillars that go up in front that hold up part of the house or a porch. That's a column, okay? So what I want you to do now is I want you to write an array that matches this first um, array that we just drew. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Here's what I came up with. 5 times 3 equals blank. Okay, so now I'm going to change this problem just a little bit. Okay, so listen carefully and rotate your array to match what I say. Okay, it says rotate, oh, I'm sorry, I want you to rotate your array to match what I'm saying. So 3 rows and 5 columns. So remember for mine, I can't necessarily do that. So I need just a little bit of help over here. Ta-da! Okay, so now if I look at this array, I have three rows, one, two, three, and I have five columns. One, two, three, four, five. They still look very similar, yet they are a little bit different. So now what I want you to do is I want you to write a new equation for this new array that you have in front of you when you rotated it. But you don't have to solve it yet. I just want you to write the equation. So blank times blank equals blank. Well, actually, you would write in the factors for that. Okay, so this is what I came up with. If you're not ready, click pause. Here we go. I came up with 3 times 5 matches that array. I want you to stop for just a second and tell your learning guide what's the difference between these two arrays. You can easily just say, we turned the array and the factors switched places. Okay? So when you rotated the array, we agreed that the first factor would tell us the number of rows. What did that do to the order of the factor? So when we started here, we had this first one. The five told us the number of rows, right? So what happened when we switched it to this second array? Yeah, they switched. So the three then turned into the number of rows. Okay, so that changes a little bit. But did the total change? No, not at all. So what I want us to do now is I want us to solve each equation by skip counting. Okay, so we're gonna write the numbers as we say it. Okay, so let me grab my marker because I'll write it with you. All right, so for this array on the left, so this is my uh, first array that we're going to talk about, let's skip count by threes because they're in groups of three. Okay, so let's do three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Okay, so three, um, five rows of three gives me a total of 15, okay? Now we're gonna jump over to this next one and we're gonna count by fives because they're in groups with five in each one, okay? So then we would go five, 10, and then we would go 15, okay? So three times five gives us 15. So if you notice, again, same factors, let me circle these for us. 
same factors and same product that we have here. Ta da! 5 times 3 equals 15. And then if I come over here, I have 3 times 5 equals 15. Even though we flip those factors, it still gives us the same product. So all three of the digits are the same. In this one I have 3 or 5, 3, and 15. And then over here I have 3, 5, and 15. Same thing. So what I want you guys to notice is if I were to write this to make them equal, I could write 5. Oh, hang on, I gotta get rid of this one. I need to write it in an actual pen. So I would have 5 times 3. So look, I'm taking that from this equation on the left equals, ready? I'm going to blow your mind, friends. 3 times 5. It means exactly the same thing. We just flipped flopped those, okay? So that's why that's helpful to remember that the commutative property is also called the flip flop property, okay? These are the same things. I have the same product on both sides if I were to multiply this out because it would really give me 15 because 3 times or 5 times 3 is 15 and 3 times 5 equals 15. Okay, so it's going to give you the same product each time. Okay, so awesome job with that one, friends. Great work today with the commutative property of multiplication. Remember, also known as the flip-flop rule, the flip-flop property. I hope that that's a really helpful strategy for you guys as you're working. Make sure also today that you're practicing that skip counting. So if you have a product that has fives in it, skip count by fives to solve it. Or if it has twos, skip count by twos. If it has threes, skip count by threes. Use that skip counting as a way to help you to be able to remember your multiplication facts, okay? So please hop back over to the module to see what you need to complete for today as your independent practice. And then always, if you guys have any questions, please let me know, I'm here to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all soon. Bye friends.